hey guys i want to make a little nightmare guide this morning um it probably won't be like a super great guide but i just want to kind of explain what i'm doing throughout a kill now um my setup obviously is a lot different than most people's i have full inquisitors a scythe and then i have a trident which i'm assuming most people would probably have a sanguine sd or a harmonized staff Anyway, I'll explain what I'm doing throughout the kill to the best of my abilities. I'll probably make a bunch of mistakes, but I figured I might as well, you know, just kind of explain. So first thing is I one tick flick basically the entire kill besides the um, when I'm attacking the pillars. I don't, I don't one tick flick there. But so if you don't know how to one tick flick, this setup might be a little scuffed. But anyway, I'll kind of explain what I'm going through. So the first thing. I always do a claw because you have 100% spec. You want to utilize it. And then I just one tick flick throughout the entire phase. Now, this is kind of a guide for like a minimal supply usage um, setup, I guess. Like, I can definitely be a lot more comfy if I brought like more brews and another restore or something. But for me, this is great because one, I'm an Iron Man. And two, I don't really do like my birdhouse runs and stuff like that, so this just helps me a lot. Anyway, husks, usually with the husks right here, you will want to attack the skinny one, which is the mage. So the cool thing is, is that the mage, or so when the husks spawn, they are already off ticked. So one of them will attack before the other one. I don't think there's, I think it's kind of random which one attacks first. But they are off tick, so you can. So when that update comes out, where the husks will always deal a zero if you're praying against it, that update will be great. It hasn't come out yet. Probably next week, I'm assuming. Anyway, you want to pray against the mage one for the most part. So just pray mage in those situations. And then try to kill it first. But because the mage had happened to be under Nightmare, I attacked it second. Um, there's no real reason for that, but if you have a scythe, you can scythe the husk, and the other two hits will go to the nightmare itself. So, pray mage, find the mage, kill it. Now, occasionally, if I have enough spec, which I did right there, but I'll save it for the next one, I will SGS the second husk, and I think SGS... Um, I initially, I got the idea, well, I guess Lake basically SGS is his husks, and so I've decided to do that as well. Some people bring, like, uh, a D2H to, like, multi-hit them, but I think the SGS is probably the most worth, so that's what I use. Um, but yeah, husks, usually pray mage against them if you can... You know, off tick them both. It's a lot more worth, and it will be a lot more worth once that update comes out. But yeah, mostly just pray mage because the mage is a lot more accurate than the ranger. And if you don't have, if you have like bandos on, you probably won't even be hit by the ranger ever, even not praying by it because you're gonna be so tanky. All right, that's just this husk. That was dangerous. Anyway, I kind of got chance there, I think, because I took a shit ton of damage right there, but yeah. That's kind of one of the penalties of bringing Phoenix Necklaces. It's great, because Phoenix Necklaces, as soon as you drop to 19 HP or below, if you're wearing the necklace, it'll proc and it'll heal 29. That's assuming you have 99 HP. And so, these, compared to food, like these heal 29, food only heal 22, so... And I have a shit ton of diamonds and gold bars that I can use. And I don't have an unlimited supply of food. So that's... And they don't they don't cost any ticks to eat. Like, a food would cost three ticks. And these are just instant. So that's the beauty of Phoenix Necklaces, if you're wondering. And then every time I go below... Um, every time I go below 20, I just proc a necklace. Alright, find the major. Nice. And you got to be, like, careful during husks because 
I out of the 1200 kills I've done, I've noticed that Nightmare tends to want to melee you more when you have husks around you. So just at all times be prepared to hit your melee prayer because it's really fucking quick. Now, um, this kill is going to be a little bit more like simple because I'm going to brew now where normally... Um, normally I would imbue heart at, at around half HP, but the only benefit to doing that is so you can get your full heart through all three pillar phases. But this is more, this is more of the simple way where you can brew because I have a trident. I can brew during mage phase. And so I just, I brew up and then I heart, but the downside is I'll only be able to heart two phases. So, the second phase, I probably won't have... My heart probably won't be fully recovered, so I'll have to only use it first and third phase. These are some of the safe spots I use for the pillars. So, if you see, you can kind of like... You can click this pillar and then move back here. And Nightmare will never be able to get to you. So, that's a little thing if you don't want to deal with being meleeed. Alright... Now, I'm going to be able to kill this pillar by the time, or before husks come, which is great. But if husks are about to come, and you can tell they're about to come, be sure to be near the middle. Alright, so this, the first sleepwalker that comes out for the beginning of phase 2, I do not... Um, I do not SGS ever. Or I try not to. Because you want to save your specs for the parasites. Now, I could have probably saved one more spec, but 60% or higher is really good. It's like, that's a good position because you want to claw the parasite. Do not be tempted. I'm tempted all the time on stream to just SGS the parasite. It, almost all the time. It's like not worth it because you're going to end up hitting a zero. Parasite's going to heal Nightmare like three fucking times and it's, it's just a mess. So... If you have spec, always use claws against Parasite. Even if you're, like, low on health and stuff, it's worth it in the long run to just get that, like, 95% chance at one-shotting it. And claws are basically 95% chance. I don't actually know the actual percentage, but it's it's got to be higher than, like, 90 to 95. Anyway, so... Now, I get four scythe swings. So there's one. Two... I get four before it'll spawn. Now I walk underneath. Okay, that was the one time it doesn't fucking one-shot it. So, that's a good thing that you got to see that. But that very, very rarely happens. But it does happen occasionally. Probably like, like I said, one in every like 20 times it just won't happen. But the crazy thing is I have never seen it miss. Out of all my 1,200 kills, I've never seen Dragon Claws miss the Parasite. I've never even seen it hit a 2. It's always hit at least like a... Whatever I hit right there, like a 30 or something. Pretty crazy. Anyway, this phase, just... Be ready to pray melee, which is now the range prayer. So... Um, now I'm going to get ready to proc a necklace. First, drink this. So next one, I'm going to try to proc it. Okay, so I didn't get the proc off, so what I'm going to do is equip it. Because when the when the parasite comes out, it'll deal like a 5 or a 6. So I proc it that way. And if you're wearing a necklace during the claws, you're most likely still going to one-shot it. Like, having your, your torture on is not going to make that big of a difference. I mean, it still will, but like, it's okay if you wear a phoenix necklace while you claw it. And so now this phase, this phase, I try to keep my prayer book open. Like I try to keep this tab open the entire time because those melees come quick and I'm still one tick flicking. So um, it's really good just to have your prayer book open, your prayer tab open right there. Uh, again, this guide is a very like 
specific guide like if you have this kind of gear but hopefully these little like tips will help you so there's one shot so I always count to four when I when I get the parasites so there's three four I don't have a spec so I'm just gonna scythe it the benefit of scything it instead of bludgeoning it is that if I'm underneath nightmare the other two hits will go to nightmare so I'm still slightly DPSing Nightmare. So that was a really good... Sometimes you'll just get unlucky, unfortunately, and you'll just... The Parasite will come out, start healing. There's nothing you can really do about it. You can just DPS it as fast as you can and try to get Nightmare lured underneath it. So, All right. Then I like to go over here. Actually, it'll probably... Yeah, it'll lure this way, so. I'm gonna brew up right now. And then I'll sand for you. So what I should have done in this position is I should have hit this pillar once. Because the parasite will always go toward the pillar with the least amount of it being charged. So what I could have done right there is I could have hit this pillar once, then come back over here, and then when the parasite came out, it would have directed its aim toward this pillar, and then I could have hit it without without the parasite having healed that pillar a bunch. So if I get another parasite here, I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so this one's hit. Now I'm going to basically come over here, charge this one as much as possible. And then when it pops out, it'll come toward the southern one. And it's not healing right now, because it's trying to get over there. That was a lot less of an impact than if I would have just camped this one and this one wasn't ever charged. Then we finish this up and get ready to SGS the, par the Sleepwalker. Again, this, it, the inventory I come out with is like, it is the bare minimum pretty much. Like there's a little bit of, you know, if something goes wrong, you might be able to survive, but it is really like banking on you doing the kill pretty smoothly. So inventory is definitely not for everyone, but it does, it does work for me for, for the most part. There are some kills and they've, there've been kills on stream where like, shit will just not go right the parasite will heal a bunch i'll be just getting smacked sixes over and over by the autos um and so yeah you just gotta it, it just sucks like sometimes i'll literally just run out of supplies by phase two so here's a little trick i want to show you on phase three you should stand within two tiles of the direct center so here's the center tile if you want to, um, so when when the parasite or sorry when nightmare does the Naruto run, um, if you're standing within two tiles of the middle, you will always be able to run toward nightmare to get an extra hit. If you're on that tick, like so for example, if you just swung at nightmare as nightmare's digging to go do the Naruto run, obviously you won't be able to get the hit before it dashes. But I'm going to show you what I mean by... So right now I'm within two tiles of the middle. So this is where I like to stand. Watch when it digs. No matter where it dug right there, my guy would have been able to run toward it and scythe it once more. Just to get a little bit more DPS. Again, you won't always be able to get the extra hit. Depending on, you know, if you just hit Nightmare the Tick before. But yeah. The other thing is don't ever stand on these lines like don't ever stand on the actual middles because you can kind of get trapped so i like to stand like right here right here right here right here usually just so that like you don't get trapped because if you're in the middle if you're directly in the middle of where nightmare is when it's about to dash it takes two ticks to leave it's still possible to escape, but if you accidentally delay for a tick, you're going to get swiped, and it's like a 50 to a 60 damage. 
yeah, this is where I usually stand. And then... See, like, right there I attacked it last, so I, I wasn't going to get an extra hit. But I can escape really easily. And lure it back over here. And then usually I'll just SGS when I have specs. Just because I'm not like in a huge, like I can't really compete for PBs because I don't have a harmonized staff. If I had a harmonized staff, I would like go ham on DPS, honestly. All right. Stand here on this corner. Keep trying to proc it. So if I can't get the extra hit, it's a good time to eat a food. Just so that food didn't cost you any extra ticks. Let's try to ask GS. Nice. So yeah, pretty much this final phase is pretty easy. Just, you know, do what you've already been doing. Second phase is probably the worst for most people. Right now, I think phase one is my least favorite. I really hate husks. I've been really hating husks lately, but the new update coming out will make it. So husks are a lot easier to deal with. You won't take some kills. I'll literally just take like, you know, 70 damage during phase one purely because of husks. It's really obnoxious. So now here's the best place to stand. These corners are the best place to stand when it dashes because it's it's a, only one tick or sorry one click or one click away from dodging. Um, that is technically the best place to stand. There's other places that you can stand again, like in those quadrants, where it only takes one tick to run away from the dash attack. But where where you don't want to be standing is right here. This is a horrible place to stand. Like in these little crevices. Like in the little like whatever these are. Like the very, very corners of the room. That's very bad places to be standing when the Naruto runs about to happen. So do not be standing anywhere near there because it'll take like two or three ticks to avoid the dash, which you're basically dead. That's hard up. So I like to stand right here. So I can just move right there. And then, again, it's, you don't have to stand there, but you can. Let's get, let's get my Phoenix necklace proc. And then it's over. Right, see what we get. Natures. Pretty decent kill. A uh, little bit slower because of just parasites healing, but yep, that's pretty much the kill. And then I just ectophile out and teleport to Clan Wars. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that little guide. Um, just, you know, hopefully it helped in some sort of way. But I understand most people won't have a setup like me. Most people have like a Sanguine SD, and there's different ways to kill it at that point where you kind of wait to heal off of pillars anyway so hope you guys enjoyed and i will catch you in the next one